really pushed hard in 2011 was trying to cement a international cargo hub at Lambert through state incentives. What was your take on that situation and do you feel that the state should provide incentives to make Lambert a, a, a China hub or cargo hub? Oh, or something. Yeah. Well, I, um, I think it, the original intent of it was there. We have $160 million of revenue and $1.2 billion of long-term debt. The whole in, in idea was to get revenue and uh, jobs for the airport. I think by the time it was voted on, it got too voluminous, and there was too many things in there, and it got away from the mission of what it originally started. So it got too too much content, and thus it was tough for people to vote on. So had the, had you been governor and they had voted that out, you would have vetoed it the way well, it was? Well, I think the governor should have stepped in and, and clarified what the intent was, and that was just poor leadership where it was waffling. And he even put things in that bill, and it got, got way, way too big. And I think we would have just stuck to the original intent of it. Yes, I would have been in favor of it. Okay. You, you kind of... When someone asked about whether to get rid of the corporate income tax, and you talked about Kansas and other states doing, and Tennessee doing something, were you referring to getting rid of the income tax and replacing it with an expanded sales tax right there? Well, we'll see. I'd like, I'd like to continue to study. I think there's some good ideas, and I think we've really never had a revamp. We have not had a revamp of our whole taxation situation in about 40 years. And we need to see if it's still relevant, if it's in the right buckets. And I think we need to just leave politics and emotion at the door and look at it and see if there's a better way to do things mm-hmm. that's more efficient. But you mentioned that that's probably not something that's going to come right away. I, I think it would be a mistake to race to it. I think we need to migrate to it, and I think we need to continue to study it and get a lot of smart people and make sure that we're covered in the worst-case scenario. One thing that is popular in St. Louis is the historic preservation tax credit, and you've mentioned before uh, that you want to re-examine a lot of tax credits, including including popular ones like those, I would assume. But a lot of people would say that those are, are helpful to revitalizing St. Louis and, and other urban parts. Would you? Would, well, how would you curtail that, and how do you respond to those arguments? Well, first of all, it's like saying everybody with dark hair is the same. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of t- different tax credit programs. Historics have done a good job of revitalizing our city, but common sense parameters like right now, we need if, they, if we don't tweak some things, and all of a sudden buildings built in the 60s are going to be eligible. I don't know about you, but we had to put a cap on it and have some common sense limitations. And I think we also had to have, have sunsets on them so they come under review. And those are the kind of common sense things I'm talking about. We shouldn't have them open-ended. We should cap the amount per year. And I think they should be, we should be more judicious about those and make sure there's a good return on investment. Um, you, 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 you alluded to in the beginning of your speech that, you know, you are a newcomer and, you know, this was probably a transition from being in the, the business world to being in politics. Is there anything so far that you think you could have done better in this campaign or things that you think you, you could have, would have done differently so far? Uh, you know, I don't think there's anything to be gained by looking at the river mirror. Mm-hmm. When we're going forward and we're setting our sights on Jay Nixon in November and we have a very good chance and we're working hard towards that goal. You know, I think, you know, uh, certainly nobody's perfect and we could have done some things, but I'm not going to live life in, re- in, in reverse. Uh, you know, we're, I'm very pleased with where we are. We've made great progress and the hard work's paying off and the message is resonating throughout Missouri. Mm-hmm. I guess the only other thing, oh, this is my last question uh, before I let you go. I guess the one thing that a lot of Democrats are, are hammering you on is the, the, the TARP situation with your bank. Do you think you felt you could have explained that? Better, or you I would have handled that differently. Very beginning, I've been very honest about it, mm-hmm. and I wasn't on the board when they took the took the uh, tarp funds. I joined the board later. I did my pro rata share and put it on a capital raise. The other people did not. Mm-hmm. I had other things going on in my life. I resigned. I got no preferential treatment. I lost my tail on the investment, and I've told the truth from the beginning. So, you know, to me, they're going over the wild turf. That's all I have.